Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to try our luck once more. We've got our second game of the day coming up. Team Arino Tinkerino versus Album Sheet. Uh, we're in the draft now. Things seem to be holding steady, but how long will that last, you may be asking? Only time will tell. I'm Zayori, joined once again by Blaze. Blaze, are you ready to roll the dice, man? Well, if we can't get through a draft and not disconnect it, I don't know where we go from there. I mean, that that's that's pretty critical data being processed. You're clicking a hero out of 102. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Obviously, it's all on uh, the server status. Uh, Valve are apparently going to try to figure out exactly what's been going on now that it's actually hindering games. Before, it was... Like, uh, it was just a nuisance. We reconnect, we're back in, whatever. But now that it's really inhibiting, I hope they, they definitely get to the bottom of it very quickly. And, uh, yeah, I guess that means that for now, NVMI versus Alliance will be po postponed. And we get to go right into Album Sheet versus Team Arena, Tink Arena. So uh, I'm pretty pumped about this. Obviously, Album Sheet are not considered as high caliber, but it's still a very fun set of players and should be an interesting game. Yeah, and important to note that Alum Sheet here have a couple of stand-ins. Uh, they do have Ink Visitor and uh, someone tagged up in Russian here in the stead of Seema the Slayer and RZ. So, underdogs and then already at a stand-in disadvantage. Certainly not ideal. Team Tinker, they're tagged up as stand-ins, but it is their full roster. PyCat, Quickbus, Sing Sing, EGM, and Bulba. We've got Big Num drafting for Alum Sheet and good old PyCat doing the drafting for Team Tinker today. Was the first pick Brewmaster for Album Sheet and Team Tinker. They grabbed the Death Prophet and the Skywrath Mage as their opener. Album Sheet follow up with that Shadow Shaman second pick. And we'll move on to the second phase of bands. Yeah, we're actually just going to see the Clockwork taken, taken out, interestingly enough. Uh, it's an interesting band for this composition of heroes. I don't really think that anybody has a problem going up against the clockwork obviously skywrath can get singled out if he doesn't have a four staff or whatever but even then he throws out that insta cast mystic flare and gets some damage in turn i guess the blade mail would be frustrating and so they're just uh, that's a, a hero that they don't want to deal with but i, I kind of feel like it's something they could have left in in favor of uh, banning out a couple of alternatives even still they uh, go for the wraith king follow up the ban of the Earthshaker clockwork and we'll see what's up high cat's sleeve for the next two picks Yes, sir. Everything looking fairly standard so far, especially those Alum Sheet bands. All four heroes that we've seen Team Tinker run in the past, especially the Tinker himself. Always a smart play to take him out of the pool. And they will take their time deciding what they want to do with this third pick. They could move into more of a pushing lineup with that Shadow Shaman starter, um, or they could just take a pretty more a more uh, traditional path here. So a lot of flexibility in the draft as well. Brewmaster. Most likely the mid-hero, but we have seen him in that position one to prioritize that blank dagger certainly more than a few times. Well, we'll see exactly what's going to be happening right now. If the Wraith King is just going to be a support to go with Skywrath, I'd be fine with that. Then you could pick up a BKB carry for the safe lane farmer. Uh, against Brewmaster, Shadow Shaman Centaur, all you want is a BKB. Uh, you can get, there are obviously a lot of heroes that go well with the item, but uh, in this case, they're not going to pick a single one of them. They're picking Death Prophet and Viper as their cores, and that means that although they could go for BKB, more often they're just looking for mitigation and sustain. Yep, and whoa, there's the Viper, picked up by Team Tinker. We've seen Viper kind of hit or miss. Some teams have really been prioritizing him, and others not so much. It seems like Team Tinker and Cloud9 are the big two in Star Ladder that uh, we've seen running a fair bit of Viper here and there, but... Now it makes me wonder who's going to be the mid. Is it the Viper or the DP? Yeah, it's hard call, and I guess uh, they have to decide who's they favor in the matchup versus the Brewmaster, who undoubtedly would be going towards the mid here. Um, Viper has less potential to be killed off by the Brewmaster when he opens up at level 6 with his uh, clap primal split combo. But as far as CS go, it could go either way. It depends if you want to control the runes and push out the wave of the Death Prophet, or if you want to... Uh, zone and control a bit with the Viper. So both are good options in either case. Obviously, we see them both on the mid lane day to day. But Album Sheet, if they pick up a roaming support that's more active, I guess I would favor the Viper there. Well, they will pick up a pretty decent roaming support indeed. The Rubik to go with the Shadow Shaman. An interesting duo of supports. I feel like we don't see these two paired together all that frequently. Yeah, they're mostly heroes that set up another hero. Uh, Shadow yeah. Shaman's Hex is a good range, and then the Shackles follow-up. They already have plenty of Disable. The Rubik 
telekinesis, if they're like ganking mid, might be able to pull somebody into the river, and that might be good. But like you said, it's not a combo that you generally often see, and uh, I don't know if it's really going to be that great for them to try to go for early kills. Like the Ether Shock, the Fade Bolt are both great mana cost effective spells, but early on they don't make nearly as much of an impact as many other supports that we do indeed see. Um, no matter the case, yeah. they'll pick that up and go into their next banning phase. They're not going to get the Luna here, uh, Team Tinker. We're a little bit of afraid of that because uh, they want to keep the Viper Death Prophet alive, and the Eclipse is one of those tools that can certainly negate somebody's life. So nuking them down, they don't want that to be an option, and they are going to be looking for early mech and, in general, just uh, good death ball play. Yeah, I'm thinking that Album Sheeter is setting up for some sort of a killer try lane here, or maybe anticipating an aggro try with... Uh, the Skywrath Wraith King could very well be a Marana to join them, uh, whether it's a farming Marana or a farming Wraith King. Still a lot of kill potential there. Um, they could also be looking to do something uh, around the Centaur with the two setup heroes. Makes for easy hoof stomps, and then the double edge is uh, more <laughs> than enough damage to make up for what those two supports lack. So perhaps that's the, the way Album Sheet will approach this game, and... Well, maybe they'll even be looking to grab an offlaner here if they want to do something crazy with the Centaur. I suppose they'll have that luxury last pick so they can be a little more reactionary based on what Team Tinker do in this last, uh, last pick here. Yeah, I guess they're also trying to go for heroes that aren't too shut down by Silence. Uh, compared to many other supports, Rubik can kind of stay back, wait out the Silence. He doesn't always have to do something like at a very specific time in the team fight. He, he's not really on the clock. He's more reactive than he is active. So uh, I guess there's merits against that when you consider the Ancient Seal, the Long Duration Silence of Death Prophet, uh, both on the table. And uh, he just kind of gets to dictate the fight based on... Uh, positioning himself back and waiting for something to happen. Another cool thing about Rubik is uh, he's always going to be able to steal the Viper Strike from the Viper. And he doesn't have any other active spells, so that's going to be a clean one for him. And also, Rubik is a great hero for turning around hard push pressure when he hits level 6 when against a Death Prophet. When he hits level 6, he'll immediately steal a Crypt Swarm that's usually rank 3 or 4 with a lot of points of Witchcraft behind it. So he gets that, immediately starts counter pushing with that and Fade Bolt, and it's actually hard for Team Tinker to follow up on a tower around that time. Mm, a fair point. But the final choice for Team Tinker will be the Nyx Assassin, and this is interesting. I wonder where they're going to lane this exactly, and I, I guess that means it's probably a core Wraith King and a support Nyx. Does that, does that sound the most reasonable? Maybe a... I don't know. I'm having trouble picturing the uh, Team Tinker lane no, they're, phase. They're going to do offlane Nyx Assassin, I okay. believe Viper mid, and then safe lane Death Prophet with Skyrath and Wraith King roaming. Okay, yeah. Slark, final choice for Album Sheet, and it is picked up by Ink Visitor. So there you go. And nice early fighter as well as uh, one that can transition into more of a late-game carry here. Yeah, I, I like the Slark against Nyx in general. I've talked about this before, but Dark yeah. Pack's really good against Carapace and his just stuns in general. Um, as far as ground target disable, they don't actually have anything. Like, the Impale is pretty much it, and... Uh, Obviously, Sark's going to see that coming. They do have, a, however, ground target damage in the terms of the Crypt Swarm and the Mystic Flare from the Skyroth Mage. So there is a large possibility that Sky, the Slark will jump in and then actually be killed off a wall in his ultimate, which isn't something you generally look to. But in this case, it's very possible. So damage over time effects. And uh, the heal, even in the early levels, isn't that much unless you've got a lot of HP behind it. Yes, sir. Now, we already have a DC as we load in, so not off to the best start. Again, this is sort of a, a crapshoot as to whether this server will hold out. We don't know if it was isolated to that last match in the file or if it's sort of a server-wide issue or what exactly the deal is. So we've got fingers crossed here, but no promises, ladies and gentlemen. No promises whatsoever. Hmm. So we're going to see a, a bit of a slow start here, but eventually I think it is going to come down to... Uh, who starts moving with ultimates. Uh, the Shadow Shaman obviously being the one to really want to make things happen, but uh, we're going to see the Death Prophet perhaps get hers first. So right now it looks like it's going to be defensive tries. They could technically go with like the Skywrath Wraith King in an aggro try with one of their cores like Viper, but it looks like they're just going to play, as we expect, a little bit safe here. Boots first, Nyx Assassin offlane, and uh, just uh, hold control on the Dire Jungle. Speaking of, it's going to be a smoke invasion that direction. And they do have a lot of level and kill potential. A single spell connects, and pretty much the others will follow. So Team Tinker do have to be very careful around these tree lines. Yeah, Slark skills up the pounce, and there's a Telekinesis as well. Most of the others holding that initial skill point, but 
a lot of potential. They will rotate over. We see the line on the map. EGM holding the high ground will not reveal the smoke as him and Bulba do venture towards the mid lane. First ward comes down. It is an observer on the high ground. Now they will commence the wraparound. Smoke has expired. And we see a ping out from the dire side. They know that they know that there's an invade and they will dodge it. So only one Radiant Ward comes down and no skirmish. I guess you could call that a victory for uh, Team Tinker. Yeah, that would have been a definite first blood if they weren't so carefully positioned. But the second they see them, they know where they're coming from. They know they're all going to be together. So they just head out to the safety of their towers. It's interesting starting build with the Wraith King here. He's got three clarities and a smoke and a seat. Really wants to be ganking early. Like he's intending to, to gank as actively as he possibly can. And uh, maybe the Observer Wood they placed over here will confuse that a little bit. Where they have to smoke is going to be... Uh, kind of back over by their own pole camps and stuff like that. They're going to be very reserved in their smoke position, but they still should be able to get some good wraparounds on heroes like the Brewmaster. Yes, sir. So it will be PyCat here in the safe lane on the Viper. We saw EGM on the Wraith King. He'll be roaming around quite a bit. Sing Sing in the mid lane on the Death Prophet, and that puts Quickba in the off lane on the Nyx Assassin. So the lane's a little bit different than we were both anticipating, but Bulba will pick up that Haste Rune, and of course he is on the Skywrath Mage here. Now on the Radiant side, it will be No Fear in the off lane on the Centaur in the mid. That puts Chomi on the solo Brewmaster, and they will have a bit of a safe lane try. Ink Visitor on the position one Slark. There are Mysterious stand in here on the Shadow Shaman, and that is Big Num on the Rubik. First smoke already underway as EGM and Bulba move their way into the jungle. Bulba still yet to skill anything up, but they will be very cautious about how they engage this. Dyer do have an mm -hmm. Observer Ward down here, so they have good vision. They know exactly where Big Num and the Shadow Shaman are. And they will use that intel accordingly here as they move into the jungle and look for the opening. Yeah, but they're going to be extremely reserved. They're pinging it out. They know that the smoke occurred because there's no reason for the supports to go um, to the east from where their top rune observer ward is unless they're going to be ganking the mid lane or ganking the bottom. So they know they're on the offensive and that they're missing from top lane and they're just going to turtle as long as they need to to avoid that first blood. And it will be successful so far. Ink Visitor with 4 CS under his belt. Uh, not finding ideal farm uh, compared to his counterpart of the Viper in the top lane. He does have 7, but at least finding some room to get experience and find those last oh, hits. No. They ping out the Shadow Shaman and he'll walk right into it. There's your Wraithfire Blast, the Impale, and yeah, that's your first blood. It is Bulba that gets the last hit and draws the extra bit of gold, but an easy, easy kill for Team Tinker. Their patience pays off as they draw the first blood. Yeah, he was looking to control the bottom rune and uh, just uh, be in a more active position, but that they were expecting TT to get impatient. They did not. And, of course, that Observer Ward, as you we were mentioning, just gives perfect understanding of their, their rotations there. So instead, they get that first blood. It took a little bit, but they're finally on the board, and they do have another smoke available in EGM. So they're going to go Roche smoke, I believe, and that should give them an opening on mid. Yeah, and there you have it. Smoke right in the Roche pit. Uh, clarity already online. Plenty of mana on both sides of the coin. But we did skill up Arcane Bolt, so a little bit of extra damage and poke, but without that concussive shot, they need to bring these targets down pretty darn quick. It looked like they were going to mid, but they'll just rotate back down bottom once more, this time taking a different path. They will see Big Num again. We can look at the Dire Vision here, and they have beautiful intel into what this Rubik is up to. They know he's pulling right now, and again, they will just be patient and wait for this opening. Still a fair bit of duration left on the smoke, though it will expire momentarily here. And Arshi blows. EGM, the jig is up, goes right in onto Pignum, connects with the Wraithfire Blast. There's your Arcane Bolt, and Koikba rotates around, connects with the Impale. Can they bring down Big Num, though? EGM, I just realized we don't have Dota sounds. There we go. Rubik falls, and EGM will get picked off as well. So it's a one-for-one -one trade this time. Slark gets the kill, and once again, Bulba gets the last hit. Yeah, one problem for ganking with a Death Prophet on your side is that she's very frequently going to be pushing out her lanes, using Crypt Swarm to last hit, and uh, maybe control runes as well. So, in that position, the, the Brewmaster is free, very frequently under tower. They love to have rotated on him, but they go for the riskier trade, and in this case, it turns out just to be a one-for-one. One. Do you see Pycat, though, with his two points in Poison Attack, actually forcing a TP from No Fear? That seemed like a bit of an overreaction, but nevertheless, he, he really wants to just make sure that he gets the Tringle Boots up as quickly as he can, and... Soon enough, he'll have that to sustain. Yeah, he had a lot of hit points to spare there. I guess without any regeneration, he didn't have too many other options. But yes, I would I would coin that as an overreaction as well. The big problem for Alum Sheet right now is this mid lane. And Sing Sing is just destroying the Brewmaster. 
27 and 8 compared to the 12 and 1 Brew. He has almost as many last hits as Singh does denies, and that's never uh, a good sign. Shadow Shaman will die to neutrals, and I believe that was an intentional suicide there. Just uh, taking that free trip back to the well, so no big deal. But yeah, this Death Prophet picking up a lot of momentum. Pretty on par with experience, Radiant's but interesting to see that value point in Drunken Haze onto the DP. She spends a lot of time uh, last hitting with that Crypt Swarm, and a lot of Brewmasters will opt just to skip that point and get the extra little bit of Drunken Brawler, and I'm a little surprised to see Chomi with Drunken Haze here. Yeah, it's not the best pickup in my opinion, but he just kind of feels desperate to get a little bit of a handle on this lane. Right now he's 17-1, and one, not where he wants to be at, and the blink is going to be extremely delayed as a result. But that's what you get laning against Sing Sing, who gets his Death Prophet. He's going to be making the most of his the fact that they have map control. He's going to get all the runes, and in general this mid lane is pretty much his to own. So Dragon Haze is just trying to, it's trying to be... Somebody who has a firm hand on the lane, but it just against, like you mentioned, Death Prophet in particular, it's not that great. Yep. Yes, sir. And I did turn on game sounds, folks. No need to picnic. There's a two-minute delay, so we'll catch Radiant's up. Uh, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Attack. Viper still in great shape. Last hit leader, Pycat with his Basilius on power treads. Just nothing the Centaur can do. No fear. Is level Radiant's four, so he's gotten some decent experience attack. in this lane, but just completely zoned out. No farm going his way. He's found one last hit. And still just trying to pull up the gold for those Tranquil Boots and just forced to take such a defensive posture. And PyCat is, well, all the richer for it. And looking at the graph already, just a huge gold lead for Team Tinker. About 2,000 gold. Very minor experience edge, but they are just finding vastly superior farm between the lanes and around the map. Yeah. For now, Team Tinker are going to be playing more passively. They want to get some more levels on the Wraith King of Skywrath. They've spent so much time roaming. They don't really pack a punch anymore. So they'll get a nice ward down, but that was pretty well scouted out by just these last few seconds on the top rune observer ward. This ward has really given them a lot of intel. But even so, Bubba has that smoke, and you can't see everything. So maybe he's going to be able to get in range for a concussive shot, which would set up Sing Sing for the kill. Yep, hasted Sing Sing. He does have the ultimate available. Level 7 goes for that point in Witchcraft over the Crypt Swarm. So his ultimate a little bit more potent. No fear in the tree line. They do ping him out. I think they're... Pretty uh, skeptical as to his positioning here, but he will juke them out. Nicely done. Or will he? There's your concussive shot to follow up. Pycat with the Viper Strike. They will connect on him, but big TP rotations. Bulba will get caught inside of the Shackles. Slark comes in as well. It will be a one for one trade to get things started, but down goes the Shadow Shaman. Hank Visitor pops the Shadow Dance, trying to do as much damage as he can to Pycat, but it's just not happening. The Corrosive Skin keeping him alive. Even pops a salve for a little bit of extra t uh, HP. And it will be a one for three trade. Now Chomi on his way in. Does have a primal split available, but just can't get in position to use it. Needs to be careful engaging into the exorcism. And ultimately he will choose to back out. Bad news bears for Album Sheet. Not only do they take an unsuccessful team fight, but they're the ones that committed the TPs and the rotations there. And it will cost them quite heavily. Yeah, you, losing your Slark with this first ultimate is never how you want to start out a game, but in this position, the the weakness of their lineup was the fact that Brewmaster couldn't rotate up top quickly enough. Didn't have the TP, Team Tinker knew it, and they knew they could dive deep. So they get a lot of great kills on a lot of squishy heroes, and yeah, that center couldn't do anything. Like, he was just slowed and pinned down to the point that he died in cast animation trying to contribute one spell to the fight. So less of a fight, more of a massacre, but... Maybe if the Remaster can get an opening with the Primal Split, Shadow Shaman not in range, though. Yep, and they also get the tower. Viper gets the last hit on that, so even better for Team Tinker. And Pycat says, guys, I think I think we're in good shape. I'm going to get a Midas. I'm going to make a pit stop here. Mm. I hope you don't mind. Uh, up top, we'll see EGM get initiated upon Telekinesis into the double-edge hoof stomp. That will be enough for a kill onto him. So uh, it's a step in the right direction for Album Sheet. But, uh, yeah, you don't see Midas on Viper all too frequently, Blaze. Yeah, especially since uh, D Death Prophet went for the Drum of Endurance, and that means they won't actually have a mech on either of these heroes for a decent period of time, but uh, it's the tempo of the game. Pycat just got huge amounts of momentum, got the tower kill, two assists. Uh, it's been free farming as far as CS goes, so there is kind of that why not approach. He, we've talked about this before, it's an item that doesn't synergize on him in particular, but there's no reason not to with this momentum. On mid lane, though, Sing Sing will be pulled into the split, and that is going to be him going down while popping the Exorcism. Yeah, not the best use of the ulti there. And that was a, a, a double whammy stampede where it ensured the Slark survival down bottom from his overcommitment and allowed them to initiate on mid and get the kill on Sing Sing. So uh, making what could have been a disastrous situation for Album Sheet uh, a win in both lanes. And good news on that front. So well played, Mr. Centaur, and slows down that 
Death Prophet momentum just a little bit more. Looks like Nyx Assassin will be very close to a Blink Dagger. Koikva just rushing the Blink. Brown boots and 2,000 gold sitting in savings. So we will see just kind of until the ultimates come back online a little bit of passivity. The Centaur Stampede's a pretty huge one, but I would also say the Death Prophet's Exorcism is one that they have to wait for to guarantee a tower push. Like I said, no mechanism up just yet, but it looks like Pycat will still find that a pretty good time. Right now he's Treads, Midas, and Headdress, and he could easily be looking at the mechanism around the 11 to 12 minute mark. And smoke from Koikba and Bulba. The Blink Dagger is en route via the courier, so there will be some long range initiation from Mr. Nyx Assassin. Has himself the Vendetta as he has now hit level 6, and EGM pretty close to level 6 mark himself. He didn't go for that one value point in stats, which is a little bit interesting. Instead went for the second point in Vampiric Aura, but uh, well, to, to each his own, I suppose. Taking a slightly different take on the Wraith King build. What the heck is this ward still doing on the top rune spawn? Like, they left it there. I guess I thought that maybe they wanted somebody to get the last hit on it in particular, but apparently he literally just dropped a sentry next to it, didn't see it, and walked away. But in the end, they find it, they get the rune, and uh, they pop a stampede for the potential to pick off EGM on the mid. Is that what it, I guess Slark was retreating. I don't know if that was a defensive no. one for Slark, or they wanted EGM. I'm not sure where they were going with that one, but... Uh will be to little avail, as now EGM is level 6, holding on to that reincarnation so he can use it at the ideal time and not waste that first really long cooldown. Slark does have a Bracer coming out, probably just moving into a pretty classic opener, the Drum of Endurance, Ring of Aquila, and Power Tread, so he is trying to get into fighting form here. Koikva moves back into Dire Ancients. It's already a pretty decent stack here. It looks like a triple stack, and he will try and stack it up once more. So Team Tinker will have... Some Ancients to fall back on will actually whiff it this time, but well, that's okay. You can't win them all. Yep, so we're looking for the next Primal Split. It does have a Blink Dagger behind it, so there's a lot of initiation potential there. But I still kind of feel that like Team Tinker just have this huge upper hand because the Slark's not going to want to be active for an extended period of time. So far, he's been playing very defensively on this lane. He's been under pressure, nearly getting himself killed a couple of times, and... Yeah, it, it turns down to close calls that you don't you don't feel confident going into these different scenarios with. Up top, we're going to see a stun miss out on No Fear, so he will be able to get out of here. But, yeah, I don't know. In this case, Inquisitor is going for a burst damage and farming build. He's not really wanting to be crazy active. And the Brewmaster is actually going to be forced to split on the defensive. Like, all these heroes on the side of AS... Album Sheet have tons of great offensive potential, but pretty much are always using their abilities to, to the defense, and in the end, they're not going to be getting many kills. Yep. Smart play from EGM to skill the ultimate there. He held it till pretty much the last second, but ended up working in their favor, and I, I think they'll be happy to trade a reincarnation for the first primal split, uh, essentially Radiant's wasted, and that just makes uh, Team Tinker feel a little bit more... A little more safe taking team fights around the map now. Pycat will TP down bottom, so with his Hand of Midas in tow, Courier does have a mech coming out, and it looks like that will be a complete mech. Yeah, he's got a couple of branches on his person here. So still a great mech timing, 12 and a half minutes, a little slower than I guess he would have liked, but uh, the Midas will more than make up for it. Mid-tier 1 tower does get denied by the Brewmaster. Nice last hit there under the Exorcism, but it will be another tower fallen, and that will make it 2 to nil in total tower count, of course, in favor of Team Tinker. Koikva vendetted up, rotating down towards the bottom lane. Blink Dagger at the ready, and it looks like they want to find a kill on this Slark. Yeah, it's a really hard kill to get, though. I mean, you have to get the silence and the stun, and I, he barely has mana for that. So, yeah, I think they might just actually take a more defensive approach. Another Roche smoke coming out from Bulba and EGM, trying to make things happen across the map. Uh, Shadow Shaman seems to be the target of choice. He'll drop down his Mass Serpent Wards right at the tower, but he is going to be going down in exchange. Yep, Bulba will get caught and just dropped right away. Now the Shadow Shaman will be all right as EGM on the back foot. Wards have already come down, and he will fall. No reincarnate this time. Pycat takes a couple of shots from the wards and looking to pursue. Viper Strike at the ready. Can't get it off as the Stampede flies. Will pop his back, but it's Pycat versus the world right now, and he will fall. So this big swing of momentum for Album Sheet. They will lose their bottom Tier 1 tower, but they find three kills out of that little skirmish. Yeah, and they get the Tier 1 tower. The, the fact that the Wraith King didn't have reincarnate there was pretty immense, actually, because the fact that... Uh, the, anybody trying to TP into Mass Serpent Wards didn't feel like they had uh, that much to contribute because the enemy was moving at max movement speed. And as well, uh, 
yeah, they were going to be taking a lot of pot shots from those wards alone. So it ends up just being, as far as structural damage, a, a trade of tier ones. But AS desperately needed those kills, and they they certainly use their ultimates more effectively in this regard. So now No Fear has his blink dagger, and with the duel of blinks, they could start to to con really contest key objectives across the map. Uh, one of note in particular is the fact that now the Death Prophet is all eleven. They're going to look to farm this ancient stack. They can stack it once more, pop the exorcism on it, and. Sing Sing uh, loves to do this to kind of get a little bit of a, a rebound for his uh, gold in general. Yep, you're absolutely right about that. Rune Control has been going the way of the Dire pretty much his entire game, and Sing Sing will pick up uh, another haste rune here. Does move into the Roche Pit, though. I don't know how much they want to commit to this with Exorcism. It certainly is an option for the Dire side. I don't believe they have a medallion out. No, not quite. Would make Roche very easy, but Sing's just kind of chipping away at him here. Interesting. So, I mean, obviously he wants to commit the exorcism to this now because uh, it's available, but his few pot shots don't really do much. Roche regens most of that HP, and they have to commit all these heroes. So now everybody's in the pit. Now everybody can do uh, what they want to. And with haste rune, with the mechanism, they feel pretty confident in this. Nevertheless, all the ultimates are up for AS, and I think they have an inkling of what's going on. Yeah, Roche falling pretty quickly, but they'll have to react very soon if they want to come in and actually contest Roshan and not just hand it over. Crypt Swarm from the Rubik to kind of chip away at him. Stampede use. There's the primal split. Singh will commit to the pit. It goes down to the Dire. It is picked up by the Viper. So already Album Sheet on the back foot here. Primal split beyond half duration, and they just don't have any damage. The Dire side still completely tapped off. Mystic Flare out on the Centaur brings him down. Rubik will find a kill on the Skywrath, but... Now the Brew is back in Panda form. EGM getting low around the backside, does not have his ultimate for another 20 seconds. It is only a one for one, but they still have the Aegis standing on PyCat. Yeah, they certainly do. And oh, a TP to the bottom tower. Cheeky play from PyCat. That will secure the kill on Rubik quite easily. And Sing Sing finish him, finishes him off uh, with a Crypt Swarm there. So Team Tinker, they trade a one for two, but they get the last hit on Rush and still have the Aegis. Mm -hmm. So they have a, a very good control of the map now, and this is just swing after swing back and forth. Uh, the gold craft will pr or the experience draft rather is kind of showing that right now, and yeah, I mean this is them kind of going for that dire advantage and trying to make the most of it. It was a little slow because the medallion lacked, but uh, AS were just a little bit slow to engage as well. Still like their attempt. I mean, Chomi went in with the blink split because he knows the threat of the sky wrath, and I think that was a really good move to make. But in the end, they just can't fight up against it. Plus the Aegis. Uh, well enough. Uh, the only steal there for Rubik was the Nyx Assassin Vendetta, which, although it's okay, it essentially was overkill damage against Bulba, which meant nothing. Speaking of, Bulba will go down, and Sing Sing is now in a really bad spot. Blink stomp into the pounce, but he gets the Inviscerin off! Are you oh, kidding me? There's no wow. way to bring him down. Yeah, that was a close call. Sing Sing just juking the Centaur at that last second. Almost keeps his buddy Bulba alive, and uh, he did from the Wrath of the Slark, but unfortunately the Centaur, Centaur was right there on the other side of the tree line. Attack and just brought him down with an axe to the face. EGM did pick up a Hand of Midas on the Wraith King. We'll hold that thought is down bottom. Shadow Shaman gets dove upon. The poison will be enough to bring him down with a lag spike there as the Ether Shock flies onto the Nyx Assassin. Pycat may pay for his overextension. He gets caught in the pounce, and yep, he will just stand his ground. Throwing a few auto attacks. Now, he was the Aegis Carrier, so Quickfoot comes in, throws a stun. Maybe they can find a return kill, but nope, just too much damage. And Pycat will pop his mech. In comes the rest of the team. Bulba finds the kill on the Centaur. Crypt Swarm falls a little short, but the Exorcism has been popped. And they will isolate the Brewmaster. Five seconds till the split comes up. Maybe they can find the Silence. And no, they can't. He'll survive for now. Sing does get Telekinesis back away from the tower. And he'll be just fine. They make it a one-for-one, one, so at least they find some recovery here. And now Sing Sing will uh, press into the tower. Plenty of time left on the Exorcism to do some decent damage here. No, never mind. They will just back out. Yeah, Afraid of the Brewmaster reinitiation. Definitely. The Primal Split is deadly right now. They can't go up against it uh, at this stage. They've already extended quite far. They lost the Aegis. They lost the Viper the second time. So although it's good they got some vengeance out of it, they can't commit any further. Um, trying to figure out what Sing Sing's going to be moving towards next. His inventory seems pretty full right now, but we have seen a lot of varying uh, builds going out for the Death Prophet after this point. Maybe go for a Shivas, maybe go for a Heart, maybe even a Hex could be used to pretty good effect against heroes like Slurk and Brewmaster. Well, he does pick up a Vitality Booster, so maybe moving towards a Heart eventually. More often than not, you'll see DPS Just grab a casual Vitality Booster and then eventually move into a Heart, but just use it for that uh, big boost of HP. The Shivas is a nice, well-rounded uh, pickup for this build just because the the big uh, shortcoming is the armor. Only six armor on the DP, and there is a fair amount of physical damage coming out from the Radiant side, so a bit of armor would up that effective HP. 
quite nicely. Viper well on his way to an Ag Scepter. Ogre Club and Point Booster picked up. And about 1,800 off the mark. Ink Visitor ready to initiate here, but does not go for the pounce. EGM on his way in. Does have an ultimate available. Almost level 11 as well. Stampede pop, but Shadow Shaman gets stunned up. Caught in the Mystic Flare. And he will fall. Easy one, uh, one for nil trade. And even sinks and creating some space down bottom. Forces out a TP from No Fear and Chomi. And he will just make the retreat. Now it is just a solo Ink Visitor here. Does have a TP scroll. They pinged him out, but nope, they won't go for it. Yep, with his item build and the Witchcraft, he has a crazy movement speed advantage, and with the Stampede already used, he knew he was safe to split push. So, forces some retreat, uh, just keeps him moving across the map, and it doesn't cost him anything. He's actually going to go for a solo kill on the Rubik here. He gets the Yules off, and that's going to be the dead Rubik. There's nothing you can do against that. Yep, takes a Silence, a Crypt Swarm, and yeah, nothing big Numb could do. So now Singh will just move back into the lane. His buddy Nyx Assassin will join him, and they'll start chipping at this tower if somebody is foolish enough to come to its defense. They may get popped on by Quake, but he does walk by this Radiant's Radiant Observer, and he gets pinged out by the Rubik. So they are Radiant's pretty aware that Nyx Assassin is inbound, but Brew waddling his way down. Show me. Sponsored by Reebok. Primal split ready. And, well, he will just back out. Not wearing the right shoes for that sponsorship. Only on Boots of Speed right now. Doesn't really have the movement speed to back that claim up. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's going to be interesting to progress from here. I, I like what you're talking about with the Death Prophet. I think that's probably one of the more important aspects is where he goes. I personally prefer the Shivas because you're up against a Slark who's going S and Y treads. So he really relies on the attack speed from his items and the negative aura that Sink Sink could prevent could be really impactful. Still, Heart's not bad. Gives you great sustain, gives him great raw HP against the other heroes. Bubble actually going to get caught inside the wards and clap down by the Brewmaster, but yeah, I don't know if that's really the most valuable to pick off. Usually yeah. you could see the tier one bottom falling uh, at least, uh, but that's down to 230 HP and I don't know. A at this point, it's just, I guess they're looking for whatever they can get. Yeah, I mean, a, a pick off is never really a bad thing, but that's a pretty big ultimate that now Team Tinker can just feel a little more safe when they're pushing towers. They know the Rasta can't jump on anyone else and Bulba's just not that high value target right now. There will be an interesting play on the item build of this Death Prophet, though, as Sing Sing picks up the Rod of Atos as his third item here. Interesting. Yeah, I don't like it, personally, because they're up against a Centaur. They've already got a Viper, a Skywrath, and even the Reincarnation Slow, but the, you can't deny that the stats are very valuable, at the very least. Uh, HP and Mana Pool, very important for him, and it scales well with the fact that he has the Yules for 150% increased Mana regen already. Yeah. That is a good point, and oh, Sing Sing, he could be walking into the danger zone here. He is way in deep, and this time... Oh, Tinkles! Tinkles killed the Yes! Oh. Yep. Oh. He killed the boots? No oh, boots. no, he might get a kill on No Fear here as well. Oh, this poor centaur. Sing Sing will die, but well worth it, I think. <laughs> Suffice it to say. Oh, this poor centaur. No, oh. Now Reebok has another level of sponsorship they need to, to correct because uh, Centaur is bootless. That's actually a huge kill. Like You look at it, it's just like, oh, it's a pick off. It barely increases Sing Sing's gold value, but uh, Big Numb going down. No exorcism for you, buddy. Anyways, uh, but yeah, the Centaur, his death isn't the important thing. It's how much money he committed to those boots that he no longer has. A thousand gold, essentially, just for that right click. And, yeah, Sink Sing will be back up in just a little bit here. So it was a pretty silly little thing going in one versus three, but certainly worth it by taking that pair of booties off the table. Yes, sir. And Centaur will pick up some brown boots, but he's too poor to upgrade them. And what makes it even worse is that he died there as well, so he loses all that gold, and he could have started to invest in a, another pair of uh, those little booties. Oh, and it's also just demoralizing as well. That's one of those, those oh, yeah. plays that just, like, it, it's hard to shake that off just... He really killed my boots. Seriously, dude. What are the chances of that shit? You know, it's that's one of those that just you, you got to shrug it off and press forward. But certainly easier said than done. Now about uh, 7,500 gold lead as well as a 7,500 experience lead for the dire side. I'm sure, Sing Sing was giggling up a storm there. Would have one of those moments when I would have loved to have that uh, that in-game button to to hit the player voice just to hear what they're saying after that. But uh oh, Sing Sing will get initiated upon here. Will get off the Yules to get things started. Doesn't have an ultimate right now. He will be the target of choice. Even Primal Split committed for this. Ink Visitor on the other side, zoning out the rest of the Dire. EGM will move to the front lines. Has an ultimate, does a lot of damage to No Fear. Will fall, now PyCat comes in. Uh, Viper Strike out onto the Shadow Shaman. Koifa coming in as well. Looking for the kill on the Centaur, but can't find it. Force to force Staff out. And it will just be a one for nil trade. Kill on the Sing Sing. But Album Sheet do commit a Primal Split and a Stampede for it. 
Yeah, but they played the fight really well. The Slark jumped again very aggressively, but he had that dark pack active, so even Baldur's Silence didn't uh, give him too much grief, and they were able to focus the target they wanted. Bringing down Sing Sing uh, prevents opportunities for uh, Quick Roche, or uh, as we see from our bird's eye view, of course, the Ancient Stack still hasn't been tapped into since he's been so active on bottom lane. But yeah, just taking the Death Prophet off the field is the most important thing right now, because yes, it's frustrating for a Pycat to get big on the Viper. He'll have like a BKB Agadim's mech build up at a great pace, but if they don't have the Exorcism behind it, because Death Prophet's as squishy as can be, then they're still going to be able to manage this one core. Yep, bottom tier one tower falls. Ink Visitor, he's he's in a bit of a sticky situation here. There's a big smoke gang coming his way. EGM has a blink dagger at the ready. Ooh. Oh, the reactions from Ink Visitor. This guy, he's got those fast fingers, so but dead. the dire team just a little bit too speedy. He will dark pack off Ooh. some of the stuns, and he's he's gonna live. The centaur ultimate's enough, or is <laughs> it, it another oh. pounce? Wow, that is one elusive Slark. And without the stampede, I think he certainly would have fallen. But mm. wow. Very nicely done. Looks like uh, Reebok is their sponsor after all. Nice Dyer's footwork there. Nice. Uh, I think, like, since Koikova had his son coming up in two seconds time and the Blink Dagger available, and obviously EGM wanted to Blink forward, if they're both on the same page, I think they still get that kill. <laughs> Bastilius bait. What is this? What is that item? Okay, it's just going to be quarried up, but you got to think that Centaur's a little bit salty after the, the, what happened to the last time he put an item on the ground. Yeah, most definitely. Bottom Dyer's tier two tower falls in favor of Team Tinker. And they're mid-tier two, taking some decent damage from the Shadow Shaman and Slark. They will try to blink back to safety, but off to the side, Koikpa finds him. The Hex comes off. He'll try to TP. Oh, that's for me. She tries to shackle him. And yeah, that's uh, that's not happening. Slark comes in now. We'll connect with a pounce onto Koikpa. Mech is there, and two fights breaking out at once. We'll continue to watch Ink Visitor, as this time, I don't think he'll be quite so lucky. Oh, the pounce to the high ground. The TP out. Ink Visitor, you sneaky devil. Now in the bottom lane, though. Uh, EGM did die, but they were able to pick off the Death Prophet. Sing Sing pressing forward, shipping at the tier 3. Does about a third HP to it before it forced to retreat. And second time in a row, this Slark just escapes by the skin of his teeth. Yeah, now Roshan is definitely on everyone's mind. It's in that time frame where he definitely could be up. But this was still a pretty early spawn, so there's no guarantees either way. They check it out, they see it, but they don't want to give that information away to this Observer Ward. Looks like they're not even going to bother dewarding when they go in. They're just going to move the illusions on top of it so Rosh has something to munch on while they try to do what physical damage they can. But the ward is still in play. Inquisitor lurking, waiting for his opportunity. Yep, and looks like his opportunity is now. He will find the illusion, pounces over it, and that will be a disappointing way to start off this fight from the Slark perspective. Still a few heroes smoked up for album sheet, but they are successful in their plight to repel the Roshan. Team Tinker, no interest in fighting in the pit without exorcism. Uh, Singh is now level 16, but 40 seconds until that big daddy comes up once more, and they will try to be a bit more patient about it. Album sheet will not be foolish enough to move into the Rosh pit. They're just trying to contest and take Radiant a good skirmish. They don't really want Rosh for themselves, and... They don't want to bottleneck themselves into that small area where they will be susceptible to a multi-hero silence from the DP and big initiation. But in comes EGM, follow up from Quake, but they'll catch Big Num, and Rubik will fall. So with the Grand Mag is dead, Team Tinker will feel a little more safe moving into the Roche Pit, and now only 12 seconds away from that exorcism. Top tower is under attack. Well, we'll see. Some good attack speed slow coming out from the poison attack. Roche will fall quickly, and it's really only the Slark who would even have a chance of sniping it, but he does not want to even remotely Radiance take that risk. So attack. they're going to go ahead and uh, just pull it back. I do hear Master Wars come down in the tier 2, and that'll do some good damage for Poikova. He strikes back, and it looks like it's going to be enough to bring down the Shadow Shaman with one last good right click. Yep, and they should be able to get the deny on this tower. They time it right, and Koikva does get the last hit. They also get to clean up the wards. Not the ideal exchange for Album Sheet. A noble effort, but the Shadow Shaman is punished. Roshan falls uncontested, and it is the Viper that grabs the Aegis once more. Looks like he is working towards a BKB. Yep, Lars, she blows. Recipe and Mithril Hammer picked up, so Pycat. Second life on him, the Ag Scepter, and now Magic Immunity. This Viper is getting big. And it seems like Album Sheet just don't have a lot to deal with the, the damage that Pycat can put out. Yeah, we saw some a lot of good kills come earlier, but I would say that's more of a lack of respect from Team Tinker than anything else. They're just like going in and underestimating their opponents because they, at this point they have the advantage to be cocky. They will get the Stunning Visitor, but I don't think that's enough to follow it up. He will be able to just sneak out of there after his come off cooldown. In fact, looking to re-engage. They want to fight this with royalty. 
He's thinking about it. Viper Strike comes out onto Ink Visitor. Will cleanse it with that dark pack. Now blinks forward, pops the ultimate. Or pounces forward, pardon me. EGM comes in. Will get initiated upon, but he has the ultimate. They pop the stampede right away to mitigate the slow. Beautifully done from Album Sheet. And now the reinitiation. Sing Sing coming around the backside. Pops the ultimate. Silence onto Chomi. Has the primal split, but he oh, no can't split. get it off. He'll be the first to fall. Now the Shadow Shaman gets picked off as well. One attack from the Viper and a mana burn is all it'll take. Let's look at the buyback status here. Brew doesn't have it. Nor does the Shadow Shaman. He actually bought back earlier. He missed that one, but this is rough for Album Sheet. 50 seconds without a Brewmaster. This is potential for Team Tinker to do a lot of damage. Exorcism will expire soon, but this Tier 2 tower will fall. And I think High Ground is an option here. There's no Glyph available, and Team Tinker will at least try their hand. Yeah, definitely have that option available. Cryptstorm will come out for the Rubik, but it might be baited into a bad spot if EGM can blink over it and get the stone off on him. It depends on how deep they want to dive. They don't want to focus heroes, but sometimes you have to kind of choose your targets, choose your battles, and get a quick easy pick while continuing to siege. Uh, just going to be a couple of long-range harassment abilities. Big Gnome actually goes for a TP home, uh, so he can just get healed up really quickly and get back into the fight. But that's going to be enough for them uh, to retreat. Team Tinker have uh, no worries in getting out of here before the Brewmaster responds. Yep, and it's great when you can shut him down before he can use the ultimate, but then you have to remember that when he comes back up, he'll have the ultimate at the ready, and uh, that's where you'll, you'll see some teams, uh, some less experienced teams, I guess you could say, falter a bit. But, wow, not even a BKB charge used by PyCat. Still on that fresh 10-second BKB. Koikva pings out the Shadow Shaman, thinking about an opening here, but won't commit for it. A few big items have been completed. Slark now level 16, grabs himself the Assault Kuros, and the Brewmaster now has a level 3 Necronomicon to go with his Blink Dagger. So no Ag Scepter on him, but we'll have some detection and a little bit of pushing prowess. I reckon some of that is just to deal with this Nyx Assassin, so they have some way to detect a Vendetta without picking up a gem. But ooh, we'll hold that thought as Initiation comes forward. Slark takes a Viper Strike, gets four staff back. Stampede used to initiate. They go right in onto Sing Sing. He gets dropped to start things off, but they lose their Centaur in exchange. Pycat pops the BKB. Will get caught inside of a nice set of Rost Awards. That'll be enough to bring him down, procs the Aegis, and he'll come right back up in the inside. Still finds the kill on the Shadow Shaman, compliments the poison, but now he's completely isolated, and he will fall. Team Tinker find uh, the tail end of the exchange as they do get repelled, and mid laner Frax stay standing for Team Album Sheet. Yeah, losing Sing Sing early in that is painful, but, I mean, they force out the wards on the defensive. They still walk away. Um, the bigger deal, of course, is the Viper falling. Obviously, what, do you have the kill streak too? Yeah, just a 487 to Shadow Shaman, but uh, he he's their main hitter right now. Death Prophet was initially the one they wanted to get more farm from, but in the end, it just turned out to be him creating space for the Viper, and uh, so far, it's been progressing well. He's going to have an MKB in a short time span, and even then, the Slark doesn't have great items to go with. If he can't go for Butterfly, he's going to have to go for like a Scotty, which isn't bad, but it is just uh, deviating from his intended build. Either way, for right now, they're going to get some return damage on this tower pretty quickly, and with the AC, they can force the Fortify. Yes, sir, and this will be a Tier 2 tower for down. That is the uh, oh, one outer tower remaining for Team Tinker. So, uh, Alum Sheet are hanging in there. They're at a pretty big deficit, about 12,000 gold, 10,000 experience, but they're still in it to win it, and uh, a few more good team fights, and well, they could be well on their way to regaining some momentum here. Centaur working on a BKB now, not too far off the mark, just needs a recipe, and finally, it looks like Team Tinker will move into this big fatty ancient stack as uh, EGM goes right into it, and oh, daddy, pardon me, that's my bad, Shadow Shaman, no. he gets caught by the Nyx once more, and he has so a dag on now, so even easier. Yeah, it's a, literally a one-second kill. He dies before he hits the ground. Uh, the Vendetta Impale, Dagon combo. But now Inquisitor might try to return. Uh, it does get the Dispel, and therefore you can't care for this. And uh, he will go down. Dominic Spree turned over. 835 gold going the way to Slark. Now that's the hero you want your farm on. Yep, absolutely. Already 2,400 gold. But now Inquisitor takes a Viper Strike again with the Dark Pack. EGM blinks over. Can't find the stun. Maybe he can close the gap here. Pounce coming up in just a few seconds, but... They'll give up for now. Ink Visitor moves into the tree line, will regenerate up, compliments of that ultimate, and he will be just fine. So a nice little counter kill there and adding to his farm quite a bit. What are we looking at in terms of item trajectory for Ink Visitor at this point? Uh, Scotty, definitely. I mean, he could be looking at Butterfly because he doesn't know about Pycat's future MKB, but if he once he knows, he has to get to Scotty. Yeah, they'll initiate onto Pycat. He turns and pops his BKB. Viper Strike right out onto Big Num, and they'll turn it around, make it a one for nil the other way. Ink Visitor hightailing it back to safety. Top lane, looking at initiation on Sing Sing, but no, they won't find it. 
The only other pickup that could possibly work out, since he does have a lot of attack speed from his items, so he's not up against Shivas, would be the Basher into Abyssal Blade. And that still uh, has a lot of merit against heroes with like 8 second BKBs and such. Mm -hmm. But uh, it doesn't give him as much durability against all this burst nuke coming from Nyx Assassin. Yeah, and that's now a level 2 Dagon up on Nyx. So even though PyCat took a tumble there, he's still been pretty effective this game. 6-1-6. Six, and six. He has definitely uh, done his share of the work. We'll see Death Prophet now with a Heart of Terras to go with that Rod of Atos. So this is a, a pretty tanky DP at this point. Still lacking in the armor department, but um, I, I... Wow, a lot of HP will be coming his way once this Heart gets delivered. I agree with you. I still think a Shiva's, uh, and even if it's not on the DP, is still a, a much-needed item pickup for Team Tinker to try to slow down this Slark. And maybe something mm. that... Wraith King could be considering. He has sure. that uh, Hand of Midas, and this is one of these games where the longer it goes on, the more EGM will kind of transition out of that support role and more into that of a carry. Yeah, it's just because Slark is so dependent on attack speed, and he's already gotten pretty much the item progression to make that perfectly fine for him. As well, it, the Viper is really good at shutting that down. He's got a Viper Strike that's going to do an 80 uh, percent attack speed slow as well as the 40 from his poison attack itself so those already reduce him quite a bit but if you put the shivas on top he's gonna have a really hard time building up those essence shift stacks uh, as quickly as he'd like to and therefore he's not as as much as a, of a late game threat mm -hmm. we're gonna see right now the gold that you're talking about accumulated from egm just uh, dumped into an ac to counteract the slarks and also give him a little bit of durability on the front line. Yep. Also give some armor to the DP, so it does help um, quell some of that issue that I've been talking about oh so much, and they will take out this big ancient stack as well. Sharing is carrying. Looks like PyCat will get the bulk of it, but EGM grabbing a couple of these uh, last hits as well. PyCat pretty close to an MKB now. Does have the two javelins that you mentioned, and of course just a demon edge away. Sing Sing with the heart, just shy of 3,000 hit points. And Oh wow, he had the... Okay. Mm -hmm. Had the yep. Demon Edge on the Courier. I take that back. That is a full MKB on Pie Cabin. Now he is really that hard hitter. Mm -hmm. But now only the, the only buybacks on the entire table are Brewmaster and Slark. Those two on the, the Radiant side have been farming sufficiently that they're able to bring a second life to this. And if we do see Team Tinker try to force high ground here, they're going to be fighting 5v7. Yeah. Very true. But they'll go for it. Roche is, what is he, about 30 seconds away now. So if they take a decent team fight here, the winner will be able to retreat into Roche. EGM looking for the initiation opening. Sing Sing pops the ultimate straight away. There is a glyph available. All of the ultimates stolen. on both sides. Stampede forward. And here we go. Primal split to get things started. Sing Sing gets off the defensive fuels wow. to get things started. But EGM in the front lines will be able to drop the Shadow Charm before he gets his wards down. Big Dumb gets silenced and stunned up as well. And it will be the uh, Radiant side on the back foot. Except for this Primal split. The Panda going hard. But that Earth Panda taking a lot of damage. And there's only one Panda left. He will just get back to the split oh. and be able to blink back to safety. No Fear comes back in. And Team Tinker just completely clean it up. That Centaur Stomp was actually huge. Sing Sing was about to get his full HP bar back from his Exorcism. It just expired, but he gets the double edge off and brings him down. That would have been an impossible to kill uh, Death Prophet if he got the heal from his Exorcism and then the heart kick back in. But that, that suicide he essentially just jihaded the Death Prophet, and that was... Uh, a very well played maneuver from him. Still, uh, the racks are dropping readily. Pycat on the front line, mecking back up EGM. And yeah, the, the only reason that fight was even close was the fact that Rubik stole an exorcism and actually kept the damage going for a very long period of time. But EGM saw through it, he focus fired him, and in the end, uh, he did fall. So it was a very interesting team fight, but Team Tinker are at this position in the game where, unless buybacks are forced out left and right, they're in a better position when they're S5. Yep, and Slark did have to buy back there as well, so he'll be stuck on cooldown, and that will eat into his farm. But as we talked about, Team Tinker just moved right into the Roche pit. Roche will fall very quickly here, and this is Roche number three. So that's Aegis and Cheese. A multifaceted victory for Team Tinker there. So what do Al and Sheet do here, Blaze? How do they start regaining momentum and possibly turn this game around? Or is it an impossibility at this point? Uh, it's it's definitely difficult, but Slark is still one of those heroes that, I mean, it, it's a hero with literally four seconds of invulnerability and invisibility that you can't counter that can scale extremely well as far as attack speed and late game goes. So they really just have to set the Slark up for success, maybe build up Lincoln Spheres for him to, to put as a buff and uh, just kind of let him do his thing. Maybe a pick off to counteract the recently picked up Cheese and Aegis would be huge too, but... 
Uh, no matter what, it just has to be really well executed fights, smart play, and focus fire on that Death Prophet. Sing Sing, he is tanky, but he still can be brought down. We've seen it happen, and it needs to be their priority. Yeah, and he did get his exorcism off for a pretty long duration in that fight, and kited for a pretty long time as well. Great positioning from EGM to zone out the supports, and he focused down that Rubik as best he could. Now a Mantis style picked up on PyCat, and he's effectively six slotted for now, at least until he loses that Aegis. As Team Tinker just move right down towards the bottom lane. Sing the only one not with him, but he's now picked up BOT, so he'll be able to join the party quite readily here. PyCat around the backside could actually get isolated from the team. Zoom out and take a look at the initiation, and oh boy, that's just an awkward time to pause. Sing just now popping the exorcism. The Shadow Shaman is in the base. Ink Visitor is going to initiate onto Koikba. PyCat around the backside, and the rest of the Radiant team is right there. And Koikba will fall very quickly. PyCat pops his BKB, as do the rest of the Radiant side. And looks like he will fall right away. He'll be coming back up, but the damage has been done. Sing Sing in the front lines has brought down the Tier 3 tower as well as the uh, melee racks. Now they'll initiate onto him. PyCat did come back to life and survive the second onslaught. Rubik falls, and it looks like Team Tinker will be able to take this team fight. EGM goes down. That procs the reincarnation. No fear goes right onto Sing Sing. That'll be enough to finish him off, but EGM's back up. PyCat laying in the right clicks, brings down the Centaur. Ink Visitor will hop on him, brings down the Viper. Can EGM perhaps turn this around? Looks like Shadow Shaman died to the Sky Wrath off to the side. Ink Visitor, nowhere for him to go. Bulba throws some damage his way. And they will try to chase him down. They just need vision. No, he'll re, uh, regenerate up. But regardless of the outcome here, the damage has been done. Melee racks have fallen. And essentially, Team Tinker got what they came for. Yeah, the melee racks is a pretty huge advantage. But you look at Slark, and he's got 93 bonus agility from that fight. He was able to do what he wanted to throughout it. And if he had two lives to work with, that would just be very difficult for Team Tinker to deal with. Of course, he the essence shift goes away after you die. But... If you just can be that active in your first life and then come back in the second, maybe they could have been better about it. But now uh, the fight in the mid didn't work out the way they wanted it to. The fight on the bottom suffers as a result. Still a nice uh, attempt going for the back flank. They obviously killed off the Nyx Assassin very quickly, forced out the Aegis, and did better than you'd expect against a team that just took Roche and Cheese. Mm -hmm. But uh, one other thing to mention that might have been subtle for the viewers is the Dire Courier did get picked off. Uh, while Viper has Aegis was popped. So the Manta style that PyCat was delivering out did not make it. Neither did Koikova's last Dagon recipe upgrade. Oh, yeah, that is uh, that is unfortunate. Maybe could have helped the Viper survive a little bit longer, but it was just sort of an awkward initiation where it seemed really good that uh, Team Tinker got split in half. Good for Album Sheet, I mean, that they got split in half and were able to solo down the Viper. But um, unfortunately, it just created so much space for Sing Sing to destroy the racks that... Uh, it just wasn't quite worth it. We'll see another pick off onto the Shadow Shaman. Koikpa continuing to be an irritant uh, with that Vendetta. Finds another easy solo pick off. Nothing game changing there, but still a kill is a kill. And uh, Rubik only steals a mana burn, so not too bad. Slark will get his Scotty back up and available. This does mean he's a farm a little bit harder to get the buy back out, but he's still got a minute on that timer and he's got a full jungle to work with. As far as uh, map control right now, the vision on the side of Team Tinker can be very effective, but it really just depends on how far these waves are getting pushed out because uh, the Dire Observer, oh, he's actually stalking Ink. Ink knows that he's being, uh, that the people are following him because he doesn't have that buff that heals him. So he'll pop the Dark Pact to get out of some Disables and a two-man rotation won't be enough. That Dark Pact, yep, yep, yep. And now even the Wraith King, he's picked up a Demon Edge, so he's just going all in the damage. This is classic EGM right here in these longer games, getting into that late game portion and his farm is really paying off. That Hand of Midas has paid a lot of dividends Still a 20,000 gold and experience lead for the Dire side, and Team Tinker in a pretty good position here. There is still an outer tower remaining for both sides, really, but uh, this top tier 2 is still standing for Album Sheet, and that's all that's standing between Team Tinker and that last lane of racks. They may just be biding their time for the next Roche, honestly. It will be uh, a long while coming, but mm. still could be something that they're waiting for. Koikva continuing to scout around. I don't think he can find a solo kill on any of these heroes, but acting as that mobile ward right now. Interestingly enough, uh, EGM is going for an MKB of his own and not too far off the money. Yeah, I mean, there's no evasion really on the table that I, uh, other than the Brewmaster, but even still, that's very important to negate. Uh, right now, the Viper can BKB out of the Drunken Haze, but even still, you're hitting on a hero that has a substantial amount of evasion. 25% is still a lot of DPS to lose. So that uh, makes sense for the Viper, makes sense for the Wraith King, who doesn't even have the BKB, so he won't be afflicted by that either. In the meantime, Death Prophet's going to pick up a Blacking Bar of her own. 
She's going to be able to deal with a lot more magic damage, uh, especially from the Fire Panda and the Centaur. And, uh, of course, just not get disabled as heavily. So that's going to be nice, but it still means that 43 minutes in, nobody on the side of Team Tinker has picked up a mechanism, and all that plus two armor aura doesn't seem that consequential. It's just weird to see these heroes without. Yeah, that's a, a fair point. Especially, well, Viper did have a mech at one point. I guess he's just sold it now. Yep, he's um, just been he's yeah. pick, picking up the Aegis and things like that, fill up your inventory pretty quickly, but it's just, uh, if you don't have the the mech on a core here, then you might as well at least pick up a Vlad's on a support. That's my mentality to it, is you get more armor, Sing Sing still at uh, 10. He does have 15 with the AC, but when Slark's nearby, that goes back down to 10. So, again, it's just pretty easy to pick him with the Slark if, they, if that's his focus, and... We'll have to see as the, the fights persist. For now, it's going to be a quick, easy Necronomicon snipe and a potentially tier 2 kill. And I'm not sure why they fortify here. That seems a really, really bad fortify to me. Yeah, especially just for the tier 2 tower in general. You know that's going to fall anyhow. That's not really one where you want to mount your uh, defense. Much rather take that high ground advantage. And now Team Tinker could actually just bum rush the tower to some degree. If they can create enough space for Sing Sing to get his ghouls off in tower range. This, this structure is going to be in some trouble. So here we go. Team Tinker coming in. They will go straight for the tower. Wraithfire Blast onto the Centaur, who will blink back to disjoint. I mean, just look how fast this tower falls. Now Link Visitor comes in. There's your Stampede. And a lot of damage coming out. A stolen Exorcism onto Big Num. He'll now become the target of choice as Nyx Assassin comes in. He gets dropped very quickly. No Fear goes down as well. It's a 3 for nil trade, and this looks like it will be the end of Album Sheet. Now the Brew is the only one remaining. He gets cleaned up, and there you go. GG, well played come out, and Team Tinker will seal the deal in 45 minutes of gameplay. Very nicely done by Team Tinker. Want to note the last thing that was picked up by Bulba was an Ethereal Blade, and while we see that all the time used to just pick off somebody really quickly by enhancing magical damage, I also want to note what it could have done for their lineup if they needed it to. Uh, essentially what you can do is do an allied usage of Ethereal Blade on a hero that has BKB, and it does work for allies in that case, and you could essentially make them immune to everything for four full seconds. So if Sing Sing was under pressure, they could have gone BKB Ethereal Blade on him, and he literally is just walking around with Exorcism completely immune to what's about, and obviously we see the Yules used that way very frequently too. So uh, if they needed to, seven seconds of immunity for a Death Prophet seems pretty solid to, to win a fight. In this case, not needed as they are just in such a great position. They force it down, they get all the right clicks they need, and Slark can't stand for this last time. So yep. 45 minutes in, Team Tinker take the win. Very nice and neat, but uh, it was contested a little heavily when they did get overconfident. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll have a short break here, guys. We have one more match coming up for our Starlighter EU coverage today, and it is Team Album Sheet versus NVMI. So we'll get to see... Uh, everything coming full circle today. I'm Zayori, joined remotely by Blaze once again at Zayori TV and at Blaze Casting on Twitter. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned because it will be a short break as we are rather delayed on this day of Starladder.